Welcome to this three-part video series looking at the basic registration workflow within Cyclone. In this part we're going to learn how to set up a job, import data and look at the data structure created. You can download the Cyclone database used in this video series by clicking on the link in the video description. First double click the Cyclone shortcut located on your desktop. You should see the Cyclone Navigator window. This is the main window for the application. Let's get started by creating a new project. So I'm going to double click the service folder. I'm going to go to configure, databases and add. I'm going to navigate to where I'd like to store my project. So in my case I'd like to store it in C data. I'm going to make a new folder. Church underscore demo. And here I can name my Cyclone database. So I'm also going to call it church underscore demo. And we just click OK there. You can see that now we have an empty database added to the navigator. So we'd like to import some data to this project. If we right click it brings up a context menu and we can choose to import data from a variety of sources such as the RTC360 scanner, BLK360, Pegasus. Um, in our case we're importing from a Leica C10. Um, this is also where you'd import data from a P40 or similar. So if we click import scan station project, drive to where our raw data is, just click OK. Brings up this import menu. Subsample allows you to reduce the amount of points that are imported. I'm leaving mine at 100%. Under pre-registration options, you can choose to auto extract black and white targets and sphere targets. Um, you can also choose to auto align scans. We'll cover these in a separate video. If imagery has been taken on site using the scanner, you can choose to map colors to the point cloud. And I would leave estimate normals ticked by default. This allows you to do cloud registration. Cube map image resolution I would leave on maximum, although if you need to save space, you can select lower resolution imagery to import. Under import speed options, I have mine set to fast. If you're importing hundreds of scans, you could choose safe mode or balanced. Under P series advanced, remove intensity overloaded pixels, I would leave this checked by default. And the mixed pixel filter relates to the noise within the P40 data. Uh, and there's a slider setting for, for the intensity of that filter. And you can find out more about how that filter works by clicking the information dialog. So we're going to click OK and the data starts to import. So we'll pause our video here. Once the data is finished importing, you can go ahead and open up the database. You can see that we have nine scan positions. Under each scan world, you can see we have a control space. This contains the constraint objects used in the registration. It's where targets can be reviewed and organized. You can see we have a model space. This is where you can view, edit and work with the point cloud data. We have a scans folder. You can see here the 360 degree scan. And then inside here we have our fine scans of targets. And lastly, we have our images folder. This contains the uh, multi-image taken at the scan position. It can be used to colorize the point cloud with. In the final part of this video, we're going to cover basic navigation within Cyclone. So if we open a model space view, you can see here the point cloud colored by intensity. You can also colorize the point cloud by RGB and by grayscale intensity. If we press S, you see the cursor changes to a bullet symbol or a target symbol. You can then left click on any given point and that becomes the point about which you orbit. If you hold down the center wheel on the mouse, you can see the cursor has changed again. If you pull the mouse backwards, we zoom in. And if you push it forwards, we zoom back out again. If we just zoom in on the target, you can hold down the left mouse button and move the mouse to the left and move the mouse to the right to orbit about the point. You can also push the mouse forwards 
and pull it backwards to look up and down. Also, if you right click with the mouse, it changes you into a pan mode. So if you move the mouse to the right and to the left, and also up and down, you can pan around the point cloud. If we zoom in on this little bit of wall, you can see the size of the points. You can make the size bigger, make the surface look more continuous. And we can make the point size smaller again, see all of the individual points. You can also choose to view the data in orthographic mode, toggling between perspective and orthographic. And there are preset views here. You can look at the data from the top view and also choose left, right and front view. These views are more useful when you've defined a coordinate system. Join us in part two, where we'll look at registration within cycling. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching.